Hey everybody, Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network and I'm back with a pretty important topic for most of us. It's how to limit or avoid getting collection calls. So when I work with people and I've worked with people and coached them through debt settlement, been their negotiator, I typically, most, most of my industry actually, has to send the power of attorney off to your creditors before your creditor or a debt collector would give us the time of day. Some companies do that early. Others don't. I stopped doing it as a general rule, sending them out before it was time to negotiate back in 2008, just because of some negative connotations that some creditors have associated with that, getting it too early before you're ready to negotiate and actually talk turkey and do a deal. So we started to encourage folks to use technology as a way to limit their phone calls. And that's developed even more now into free, awesome tools that you can use. And we'll pick on Google Voice. I love this as an example because Google Voice is very simple and intuitive to set up and it's free. So let's assume for a moment that you live in Idaho and you've got a 208 area code, the whole state does, right? And you can go to Google and Google how to set up Google Voice. And you, you go out and get a phone number in the state of Idaho, also with a 208 area code. Now this number, it, the way that Google Voice is designed is it's a number you can give to somebody, have them call it, and it will forward to whatever number you tell it to find you at. And when it finds you, like on your cell phone, you'll see that it's Google Voice calling, you pick it up, and you'll hear the caller announce themselves. Hey, it's Michael Bovey calling, if you wanna to talk to me, you'll press one and connect to me live. If you don't wanna to talk to me, you can press two and send me to voicemail. So that's how Google Voice works. But when you do the setup, you want to check the do not disturb box. Now, if you have the luxury of pre-planning while you're looking at the inability to pay creditors, mostly credit card debt is what, when this is applicable, is if you're not so late that they've locked you out from making changes to your primary contact information, you go out, you get this Google Voice number, you log into Chase Bank, you change the number to this new number. They have your old numbers. They still have them, they didn't actually delete them, but you replace the primary number. This is what banks, collectors are gonna use, their auto dialers are gonna call. And now you've just, for, for the most part, the feedback that I receive for years now, is that pretty much eliminates 90 or more percent of the collection calls. This takes about two weeks to propagate through all your banks, so you just log into all the ones you can and make these changes, and now this number gets the calls. You check the do not disturb box when you set up Google Voice, and it doesn't forward to you. It just goes right to voicemail. It does, the caller doesn't get to announce themselves and forward and you pick option one or two. It just goes to voicemail. So that's really cool. Now you're not looking down at your cell phone constantly to see whose call you're gonna avoid next. Even in the best of times when all your bills are paid, you're probably not picking up phone calls from people that you don't know. So this is probably no different, but assume you have 10 accounts that you're not paying on. And now suddenly you're getting 20, 30 phone calls a day on these accounts. That's a lot of interruption in your day and a lot of your friends and family and coworkers wondering, why does this guy get so many calls that he ignores, right? So, and maybe we all get them so much we don't care anymore, but it certainly will save you some sanity as it relates to constantly looking down. A couple things that I wanna cover more about this. One is record a custom greeting. Don't act as if you've fallen off the planet to debt collectors or your banks that are trying to reach out to you to try and work out plans with you. They have some good plans. We talk about hardship plans in one of the other videos. Those are really good plans, zero interest, man. If you qualify, you will do wanna to talk to your creditors um, and that will be something proactively that you can reach out and talk to them. But when they call and they hear your voicemail and it's just one of those voicemails that says, you've reached 208, 597, you're, you know, it's just an automatic voicemail. They don't know that that's you and numbers do change all the time. And so they might be thinking, huh, okay, well that's, that's the number for Michael I have on the screen, but I don't know if that's Michael. What other numbers do I have here? And so they'll dig into their database and they'll call your cell phone anyway, right? Or what's worse, and most of us forget that we even did this when we apply for accounts, almost every account you apply for credit-wise, they ask for an emergency contact. They don't care about your emergencies. They just care who they can call if you fall off the planet. And so when you have your mom on there, like I did before I got married, I don't want my mom getting tipped off to the financial problems that I might be having. So it's a good idea to record a custom greeting so that your voicemail says, hey, you reach Michael Bovey, can't talk right now, leave a message, I'll call you back. So when you have your voice on there saying your name, now they know they reached you. 
and the creditors and the debt collectors that do the dial around and call all these other numbers that they think they might be able to reach you at because they don't know if they reached you at the other number, you take that excuse away. And so it eliminates a lot of that, some of that embarrassment, basically, work calls even, right? So this is a neat tool. A um, couple of other things that I wanna encourage you to do when, if you distractedly pick up a call from a debt collector and you're not prepared to talk to them. It, like I said, if you, you get a call from your bank, you're only a couple months late, they might have some plans that you do wanna to talk to them about. But if you're really not trying to talk to a debt collector or a bank and you distractedly pick up, I walk my dog every day and I'm out. My dog's a little unpredictable when he sees other animals. I see, I'm walking him, another dog coming the opposite direction. I start watching that dog, I'm watching my dog, I'm watching that dog's owner and my phone rings, I don't even look down, I just pick it up, right? Hello, turns out to be a debt collector I don't wanna to talk to. Well. You can get off the phone with them real quick with a click. I mean, that's a little rude, but it's not like they can steal your birthday. But if you're polite, I'm kind of polite, I would probably do something like, hey, can't talk right now, I'm driving. Uh, mostly, uh, hopefully, even debt collectors don't want to distract a driver. Or just say something like, hey, I'm with somebody, I can't talk right now. If you tell a debt collector that you're with somebody and unable to talk, they know you're not going to have a sensitive conversation about being late on a bill when you're standing next to a coworker or even in line at the at the supermarket. So those are just some polite ways that you can get off the phone for a conversation that you weren't really prepared to have. See you on the next video.